Hi everyone, so um, uh, I've decided to try and start documenting uh, all of uh, my adventures in robotics um, on video and try and keep them in order. Um, so I always record everything, but I never actually get a chance to post it or put it online just because I don't really get around to it. Um, and uh, I should do more of this because, you know, I sometimes forget that I've actually done things or, or tried things and I wind up redoing things and reinventing the wheel. And so this is uh, not only for, you know, uh, people to see, but also um, also for me to kind of look back on. Um, so anyway, so this is, I guess, going to be episode zero. Um, who knows if I'll stick with it. Uh, you know, as video blogs go, it's probably not going to go far. But anyway, um, so in today's episode, uh, what I want to talk about is um, uh, moving parts between uh, work cells. And um, a lot of what I'm going to be talking about is to do with flexible manufacturing. And uh, you, one of the things that you want to do in a flexible system is you want to be able to bring different parts at different times uh, to sometimes the same and different work cells. Um, and to do this, uh, what you need is you need some way of, of fixturing parts, you need uh, some way of transporting the parts, and then also some way of delivering the parts. Um, now, a lot of the methods that I'm experimenting with are, um, just, man, this light is, sorry about that. Um, a lot of the methods that I'm experimenting with are, uh, they're, um, you know, mid-cost, they're not crazy, they don't require a crazy amount of implementation. I mean, they're very lean. Uh, so uh, if you have to strip them down and put in something different later on, uh, you can do that without, uh, you know, sacrificing a lot. And there's some things that you can really take advantage of. Um, and that is, so first of all, you have multi-axis robots, uh, and the second of all is vision system. Um, and we're going to try and use those throughout these experiments as much as possible. Uh, so this episode is tray delivery, uh, so or bin delivery. Um, so one of the things that we've been using, um, and uh, this is uh, at the McMaster Learning Factory, which I'll talk about more in a later episode. Um, one of the things we've been using is we've been using these part bins. Um, and these are just like off-the-shelf like storage bins. Like uh, You can see some in the, in the background there. Um, they're kind of like those, but a bit bigger. And uh, essentially, you make inserts that you put inside of those bins, and they locate really, really well. Um, so you can, uh, you know, get some repeatability out of them. Um, so yeah, so uh, I'll show you the uh, implementation of it. Um, so this is a top-down view of it bringing it in, and there it goes and brings it in again. And I'm just going to pause this for a second, and we can take a look at it. So here we can see this is a UR3 robot. So these are their Universal Robotics Collaborative Robots. I'll do another episode talking more about these robots because um, they're very different uh, than what a lot of people have used um, in performance and in the way you interact with them. Um, and then here we have the bin, and then we have this, this blue and black tray guide thing. So this essentially uses uh, kind of a wedge um, to, uh, to pull the bin in. And the, there's no special gripper here. This gripper is used for other stuff. Um, but we're just using uh, a flat feature on the gripper to pull the bin in. And uh, we, I did a lot of tests in different orientations, and this, uh, this, is, this is a very uh, reliable um, setup, and whenever the bin's put in at different angles. So how's the bin getting put in? Uh, that's a good question. Um, so in this case, it's going to be brought in by an AGV, and the AGV can place it within, um, it uses a vision system as well, and it places it in within, within about 5 centimeters. Um, so this robot just corrects for that, and that way uh, you get the bin dropped off in an awful place, and without a lot of fixturing, uh, you can just bring, uh, use the robot to bring the bin right into a spot uh, that is repeatable. So then uh, this video is uh, just showing uh, after the bin's brought in, so the AGV is not placing it now, right now it's placed by hand, and then you can see, um, I should mute that. Uh, and then you can see that uh, the robot's capable of putting aluminum blocks on a fixture pin, on a fixture with some dowel pins, and then it's going to put in this little tiny um, plunger part. I don't know if you can even see it. Uh, so it's going to take that little tiny plunger and it's going to drop it in there. Uh, you can't. Yeah, there we go. And that that's a very small part. So the clearance on that we have about uh, you have about 0.5 millimeters. If you're off by 0.5, you're just going to crash putting it in. Uh, same with this part, actually. So the cylinder has to go up inside of this and then has to locate on top of it. So this is a, a dry run. Um, this is by no means optimized. The movement's not optimized. Uh, half the stuff isn't even on the work cell yet. Um, but again, I'm just this. The point of this uh, this video is just to show um, it's fake screwing. 
so the point of this video is just to show how you can how you can pull a bin in and grab parts from it without a lot of fixturing. So I've seen some other uh, solutions to this where a robot comes up to drop off a bin um, and there's a, a lot of screwy stuff or they have um, what they have is they put the bin on a hill and the bin kind of slides down and then there's a pneumatic that pushes it over into a fixture on the side. And with, uh, with this one, um, it's pretty simple. Uh, you know, that fixture costs, I don't know, $50 in acrylic max. The bins are six bucks. So it's a, it's a nice low cost way of doing things. And, um, I'm going to implement this on this work cell and then on a couple other work cells as well. And we're going to see how it goes when we've actually done a few runs. So I've done this run, the one that you just saw in the video, we, I did about 10 of those and it worked perfectly every time. I didn't have any problems. Um, but, uh, once we get into higher accuracy parts and maybe with some manufacturing variants, um, you know, it might become a problem. Uh, so anyway, yeah, so that's episode one. Um, we'll see some progress on this. So this is, uh, we'll just call this uh, work cell bin loading. Um, so yeah, hope you guys like this.